Okay, so in this problem, we're told a grocery cart with mass 16 kilograms is being pushed at a constant speed up a flat 12 uh, degree amp by a force F of P, which acts at an angle 17 degrees below the horizontal. Find the work done by each of the forces, Mg, F sub n, Fp, on the cart if the ramp is 15 meters long. So first thing we always got to do is draw what's going on here. So we have this cart, right, this uh, grocery cart. It's going to have some mass m which is 16 kg it's going to be on this incline which is 12 degrees uh and we're also given the length of the ramp or the distance it's going to travel which is going to be 15 meters so let me actually draw this line a bit more parallel this line's supposed to be parallel to the ramp so this is 15 meters the distance it's going to travel and then we're also told uh there's going to be a force f of p which acts 17 degrees below the horizontal. So if we have our cart here like this, the horizontal just means this line right here. So uh, basically just the X axis here, you can kind of imagine it. And we know it's gonna be 17 degrees uh, below it. So it's gonna be pointing at an angle kind of like this, um, but that's gonna be F of P. And what we're trying to find is work done by a bunch of different forces. So work due to gravity, um, so we can just, I'm going to write it like this. We're trying to find WG. We're trying to find the uh, work due to the normal force. And then we're also trying to find the work uh, due to this force being applied, which is F of P. So how do we do this? So you need to know what the formula for work is first. So work equals force times distance multiplied by the cosine of theta. So we're going to need to know the force being applied for each one, the distance, and then theta is the angle between the force being applied. So imagine this is the force. And then uh, it's the angle between the force being applied and the distance it, or the direction it travels. So if let's say the force is being applied like this and it travels this way, um, the angle is going to be 90 degrees. So hopefully that makes sense, but we'll see it more when we solve each one. Let's go ahead and start with uh, mg. So we're going to find the work due to the force of gravity. So we're going to find wg, which can be work due to gravity. Uh, the force is going to be mg. So since it's uh, gravity, the force due to gravity is just mg. You should know that uh, f of g just equals mg. So we have that force. So mg just acts straight down on our object like this. So any object is just going to be straight down regardless of the plane incline. So the force is going to be mg. The distance is going to be how far it travels, which they tell us is 15 meters. Uh, that's how far this goes for. So multiply it by uh, 15. Let me write that in there. Times the cosine of the angle theta. So let's figure out what theta is. So um, this is a little tricky, but we know the direction it's going to travel is this way. Okay, so I know it's traveling that way. And I know that this angle right here right so straight down perpendicular to this incline is uh this line right here and the angle between the gravity and that uh straight or perpendicular to this incline line is 12 degrees so this is something you should know the angle of incline in the angle between uh, perpendicular and the force of gravity so this angle right here is 12 degrees so if that's 12 degrees and we know that this is perpendicular, uh, perpendicular to the pain, uh, plane of incline. And so we know this travels along the incline. So this angle right here is 90 degrees since it's perpendicular to it. So the angle between the direction it travels this way and the force is 90 degrees. And then we have to add this 12. So 90 plus 12 is 102. So the angle between the direction it travels and the force is 102 degrees. So all we got to do is plug that in 102. Uh, and then now it's just a matter of actually plugging in the values. So uh, we're, or the mass, they tell us is 16 kg. So let's write that in. Multiplying that by g, which is the acceleration due to gravity. That's just a constant, which is 9.8. Multiplying it by 15. Sorry, it's lagging. 15. Uh, and then the cosine of 102. Now what you want to do is plug these in. So 16. Uh, I'm just plugging in my calculator, 16 times 9.8 times 15 times the cosine of 102. And you will find that the work due to gravity 
is equal to minus 489.00. So basically minus 489 and then the units for work are joules. So minus 489 joules, that's going to be the work due to gravity or your answer to uh, A right here. And so uh, that's, or not A, that's just your answer for one of the forces, which is the work due to gravity. Uh, and then now what we're going to do is find the work due to uh, the force, the normal force. So this is your answer to the first part. You can round to minus 490 if you'd like. Um, but let's go ahead and do the second part now. Okay, so now to find the work due to the normal force. So once again, the formula for work, it's always good to rewrite it, is force times distance times the cosine of theta. So the force in this case is the normal force. So we can write F sub N times the distance traveled, which is 15 meters, multiplied by the cos of theta. So we don't actually need to solve for the normal force in this case, and you'll see why in a second. So what is theta? So once again, theta is the angle between the force and the direction it travels. So we know it travels up this way, and the force is going straight up, perpendicular to the plane of incline. So if this line, the direction it travels, is along this incline, it's going to be perpendicular to that, which means the angle between it is 90 degrees. And now this is where um, we don't actually have to solve for it because theta is 90 degrees, the cosine of 90, you should know, is just zero. Therefore, if this is zero, the whole thing is going to become zero because we're multiplying by zero. So really, the work due to the normal force is actually just zero uh, joules because this uh, angle theta is uh, 90 degrees, which basically just makes the value zero. So the work due to the normal force in this case is zero joules. Um, and yeah, so... Uh, it's always good to look at the angle first instead of having to actually solve for it because it sometimes will just shorten the problem for you uh, and just make it a lot easier. So uh, that's going to be that. And now what we want to do is solve for the last one, which is the work due to the force, uh, right, the force that they tell us about. So W, F of P. So let's go ahead and solve for that now. Okay, so now for this one, we're finding... Uh, the work done by the force of f of p so once again the formula is work equals force times distance times the cosine of theta where in this case the force is going to be f of p uh, we know the distance it's going to travel is the same as all of them 15 meters so this value is 15 cosine of the angle between uh, the force being applied and the direction it travels so now let's figure out that so looking here uh, you should see that this angle is 17 degrees and this angle is 12. So the way I want you to think about it is essentially the angle or this force is being applied 17 degrees below the horizontal like this. So if we want to find it this way, right, along the direction it travels, this is the way it travels. So the angle or the direction it's traveling is basically along this line right here. So if we want to find the angle between them, it's going to be this 17 degrees right here plus this 12 degrees. So 29 degrees is the angle between uh, this and the direction it travels. Uh, therefore, cosine is of 29. So we know the angle uh, is going to be 29 degrees. So that's cosine, right? Because it points down like this right here, uh, 17 degrees below, this or the, uh, below the horizontal. And then this is 12 degrees above the horizontal. So it travels 12 degrees above the horizontal. Uh, we're 17 degrees below, so you would just add them up. So hopefully you understand that, but that's where we get uh, that, uh, let me zoom out a bit, that 29 uh, degrees. And now we just need to find F of P. So this is where it gets a little tricky with the angles and stuff. So try and stick along with me. But uh, the way we're going to do it is by summing the forces in the X. So I want to solve for F of P. I know the sum of the forces in this direction are going to be equal to zero uh, because I know that we're traveling... Uh, right, we're traveling at a constant speed. Therefore, the acceleration is zero because uh, if you're at constant speed, you're not accelerating. So F equals MA, but A is zero. So this thing becomes zero. So uh, now we just need to add up the forces in the X. So the two forces in the X are going to be the X component of MG and the X component of F of P. First, let's find the X component of MG. Uh, the way we do that is... Uh, 
kind of looking at this triangle here. So if you look at it like this, where this, va this line right here is your MG. And then I'm just redrawing this triangle here, essentially. So this angle right here, this 12 degrees, is the same as this angle right here of this triangle. So that means this angle right here is 12 degrees. Uh, sorry about that. So there's 12 degrees. And then this is the X side. So MGX, since it's along the X. And sorry, I forgot to say, but when I'm referring to the X, I'm referring to along this incline right here. So this right here is your X axis. So anything along this incline is our X. So notice this force right here is along it, parallel to it. So that's why we're doing the, the X component of that. And then there's also going to be an X component of F of P here because uh, F sub N is along the Y, you would say, perpendicular to that X. And then uh, MGY or the Y component of gravity is also along it. So that's why we're only taking into account the X component of this and the X component of gravity. So uh, this right here is your MGX. And to solve for uh, MGX here, uh, the way we do it is by using the sine function. So the sine of an angle, in this case, it's 12, is equal to uh, adjacent, or sorry, not sine. I apologize. MGX actually isn't right here. I made a mistake. MGX is right here. So I accidentally wrote it right here. Sorry about that. It's supposed to be right here because notice it's opposite of the uh, angle. I accidentally drew it on the side, which would be MGY. Uh, sorry about that, but it's really here. And then we do use sine though. So sine of an angle, uh, in this case, it's 12. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite side of the angle, and then the, this side is the hypotenuse, so MGX divided by MG. So multiplying both sides, you'll get the X component of MG is MG sine of 12. Okay, cool. So that's your X component. And so I'm going to say if it goes to the left, it's negative. So notice our gravity is pushing us down, so it's to the left. So minus MG sine of 12. And then we have plus, and now what we need to find is the X component of our um, F of P right here. So the angle, or so F of P is going to be, I'm just going to write it first. So it's going to be equal to, uh, let me zoom out a bit, FP cosine of 29. So let me try and explain how we get that. So notice uh, we're trying to find it along here. And so as I said, we're pointing 12 degrees below. So uh, if we're trying to get it along here and we want to find uh, the X component of it, notice the angle between them is 29 degrees. So uh, basically what that means is when we do this, we're going to form a triangle that is um, 29 degrees. This would be your F of P. And so this would be your X component. Hopefully, you kind of understand where that's coming from uh, because you can kind of imagine it like this. So you have your F of P like this. This line right here, let me switch to a different color, actually. So uh, let's go with red. So uh, this line right here is your F of P, okay? And then let me change the color. This purple right here is your F P of X because it's along the X axis. So this angle right here, and we're trying to find it like this. This angle is 17 degrees from here, uh, this horizontal line. So kind of look at it like that. This horizontal line is 17 degrees because we know it's 17 de uh, degrees below. They tell us that. But then we're 12 degrees um, above that because it's on an incline. So this angle is 12 degrees. And we're trying to find the angle between uh, here and there. So let me get another color. Sorry about that. Uh, let's go green. So this angle right here is going to be them added up, 29 degrees. And when you have an angle like, sorry about this, um, you have an angle like this, this angle right here, which is this angle right here, I'm circling it, is the same as this angle right here. So this angle is 29 degrees too. So it's kind of uh, complicated, but essentially it's going to be 29 degrees. So the angle between, or the angle of this triangle right here is 29 degrees. So hopefully that made sense. Um, but yeah, so let me just get out. 
So basically the angle between F of P and this triangle right here is 29 degrees right there. So our X is 29 degrees like that. And then we would just use cosine. So the cosine of an angle, I guess we're going to be doing it in green now. Um, but uh, yeah, the cosine of an angle is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent is X over F of P. And then you multiply both sides. So your X component is F f of p cosine of 29. So that's where we got that right there. And then notice that if I go f of p cosine of 29, just moving this to the other side, um, we'll be able to solve for f of p, which is what we needed, right? We needed f of p in order to plug it in uh, down here. So that's the whole reason we're summing the forces in the x. Because I knew f of p had an x component, I would be able to sum the forces and just solve for it. So f of p is going to be equal to mg sine of 12 divided by the cosine of 29. Um, and then, yeah, so plugging these in, the mass is, let's look, the mass is 16 kg. Multiplied by g, acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant, 9.8, times the sine of 12, and then divide by the cosine of 29. So... Go ahead and plug this in. You'll find you'll get 37.274. Um, that's F of P. Q minus in Newtons because it's a force. Uh, but we have that value now. All we have to do is just plug it in. So 37.274 times 15 times the cos of 29. And once you do that, you'll get the work due to this force P. Uh, and you'll get 489 about, so about 489, and then we're dealing with work, so it's in joules. So about 490 joules, you can round however you'd like, uh, but, but essentially it's going to be 489 joules. Uh, that's going to be uh, your answer for uh, the work done by this force, F of P. Uh, the work by F of N was right here, and then the work due to gravity was right here. So... Uh, we kind of took a long route on solving this one right here, but I think it's important to understand uh, how we got those angles there. So hopefully you understood how I got them. But yeah, so um, these are going to be your answers to this problem right here, these three. And hopefully you found this useful.